Welcome back to Honest News. If you'd like to follow in the reading of God's Word, 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also, that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for giving us heads up. You give us warnings. You help us, Lord, to see what's up ahead, that you might spare us, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you anoint this message, destroy the yoke, that this word will penetrate and shine into the hearts of your people. We plead the blood of Jesus as we minister your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is a very urgent message. This is a serious message. I really felt prompted by the Lord about this this evening. Um, we are living in perilous times, and this word perilous means dangerous. Dangerous times. Let's not take uh, life for granted. Amen. Let's not uh, just go through the day in this mentality that we're walking in a safe place. This world is Satan's world. The God of this world is Satan. Are you listening? And his children, the children of the devil, they're everywhere. The enemy of the cross is everywhere. We're not in heaven, folks, we're not in the kingdom on this earth if we're not walking in the Spirit. If we're going to walk in the kingdom, we must walk in the Spirit, must live in the Spirit. That's what we're going to be dealing with in this message about being led by the Spirit, our steps being ordered of the Lord. Now notice Jesus, Jesus, was led of the Spirit. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus is being led by the Spirit. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Verse 14, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And this word sons is helios, mature. This is not babes or children. These are sons. You're not going to be led by the Holy Spirit as a babe. You're not going to be led by the Spirit as a child. You must become as a son develop and mature before you're going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Are you listening? Psalm chapter 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Amen. <clears throat> I don't know your situation, what you've experienced, but I can almost surmise that you have had in your own experiences as a believer times when you said, I knew that God spoke to me, but I disregarded what he had said to me because I didn't think it was God saying it to me. You understand what I mean when I say that? Let me explain it this way. Even though we know in our heart that God is speaking to us, we second guess and we say, is that God? But we know in our spirit and our heart, we know it is him. 
because his voice is distinct. But something in us causes us to second guess or causes us to shrink back from obeying him. And how many know that's the flesh? The flesh will cause you to disobey God every time. So there's a battle going on within us. There's a struggle going on within us. Now, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. He didn't say his lambs knew his voice. He said his sheep know his voice, and no other voice will they listen to, and they will flee the voice of a stranger. But I want to focus on where Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Now, there are times when we're being uh, trained by the Holy Spirit. We're being trained by the Lord to learn God's voice. And those times may be just as simple as the Lord reminding you you forgot something. Amen. And you just disregard his voice and you find you end up going down the road and you forgot it. Right? Maybe you're going on a trip and you know the Lord told you you forgot something, but you disregarded his voice again. You end up going down the road and you find out, I knew that was God. I knew, you know what I'm saying, right? Uh, I know of a person that had an example uh, experience where uh, they were getting on their airline and they were actually already seated and uh, all the luggage had already come out. They were getting ready to remove uh, the, the stairs from the airline and they were getting ready to, to depart. And all of a sudden, uh, he saw, he looked out the window well, first of all, let me say this. He actually was told by the Lord, first of all, he said, pray for your luggage. And so he started praying for his luggage. He didn't know why he was praying for his luggage, but God put it on his heart to pray for his luggage. And then he opened up the window to his, to his left, I guess it would have been, and, or to his right. I don't know which side he was on the plane. And he opened up the window and he noticed they were bringing out one set of luggage and it looked like his. And the closer they got, he realized it is his luggage. They stopped everything to make sure that luggage was on the plane. Now listen, folks. Would that have happened if he didn't obey God and pray for his luggage? See, God told him, pray for your luggage. And then the Lord was already working before he even prayed because he knew that he would obey him and pray for his luggage. So the Lord says, before you even ask, he said, I've already answered. Amen. But does that mean that this pastor didn't have to ask, didn't have to pray? No, he had to pray. But God knew he was going to pray. Are you listening? In his foreknowledge, God knew he would pray. That's why G the, the scripture says it that way. Before you even ask, the Lord's already answered. Because you're not going to ask, you're not going to pray for something unless the Lord gives you that knowledge or that wisdom to do that. Are you listening? Not, none of us can do it on our own, people. None of us can. It's, we can't do anything on our own. And so anytime we're praying uh, for something or someone, or it's because the Lord laid that upon our heart. Other than that, it's just religious. You're just going through a form. It's just religious. But if you're being led by the Holy Spirit when you pray, that's something that God put on your heart to pray for. I give you another example. Uh, you may be uh, at a store and you're, you're, you're buying something. I've had this happen with me. You're buying something and the Lord will put it on your heart. Don't get that one. Get the one behind it. Get the one beside it. Don't get that one. And I've disobeyed the Lord and, and not took the one that he directed me to take. I took the one I was taking when he told me, don't take that one. I ended up taking that saying, oh, that's not the Lord's voice. That's just me thinking, right? And lo and behold, you get home, you find out the thing that you got stinks. It's rotten or something like that. Well, the Lord just told you, don't take that one. What's he doing? He's teaching you his voice. He's training you. It's one thing to be on the interstate and the Lord say, don't go that way or take this ramp or, uh, you know, 
I'm going to tell you people, I've had these things happen to me over and over and over. And thank God I'm starting to know his voice and not questioning his voice anymore and knowing his voice. And the rewards are wonderful. They're marvelous when you know the Lord's voice. But there are still those times when we still second guess or we still fight the voice of God and say, oh, that's not God's voice. Amen. But it's one thing when the Lord says don't take that way and you end up bumper to bumper in traffic when you could have went a different way and missed all that traffic because of an accident or something else on the interstate. That's, that's a soft, what I would consider a soft uh, test, right? But what happens when God says don't go that way, you end up disobeying the Lord and you end up in a car accident? Huh? Are you listening to me? What happens when you disobey the Lord and, you know, it becomes fatal? Maybe not for you, but for somebody else. What happens when the Lord says, don't go to that store today? And you obey, and you obey the Lord and you find out there was a shooting in that store or that store was blown up today. Hello? Or if you're getting ready to book a flight and the Lord puts it on your heart, don't, don't go on that airline. Amen. Don't, don't book that flight. Don't sit in that seat. Amen. I hope that this message is getting your attention, people. Because disobeying the Lord can cost you. Maybe it'll be a soft test at first, but eventually it's going to get more serious. We must know his voice and we must be led by his spirit. It can be fatal. It can be fatal. Amen. And let me tell you this, people. We're all going to be tested now that this word has been given to us. Every one of us are going to be tested. Are you on guard? Are you ready? Because it's coming. The test is coming. We need to be alert. We need to be sober. We need to be vigilant. Amen. We don't, we don't need to go through life, this mentality that everything's just like I was saying earlier today, a bed of roses, everything's easy. No, we're on the enemy's turf here. Amen. And, you know, just think about this. When you're driving your car, you don't drive on the offensive, do you? Do you? No, they teach you to drive in the defensive because you don't know what that other driver's doing. Amen. And so we're constantly, always aware, vigilant, sober, amen? Not just because somebody may uh, be, be not paying attention, especially in this day and age when people are on their smartphones and texting at stoplights and not paying attention. But look, there's so many different things that can happen throughout the course of a day where if we don't obey God, they can even become fatal. But brothers and sisters, listen to me. We're living in perilous times. We're warned in the scripture. Perilous times shall come. Amen. Now notice the next verse here. Though he fall. Though this good man whose steps are ordered of the Lord, who delights in the Lord's way, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. There's going to be times, unfortunately, where we do disobey the Lord. Amen. There's going to be times when we trip and we fall, God forbid, but it does happen. And when you fall, you will not utterly be cast down because the Lord upholdeth you with his hand. He's not going to let you keep falling. Amen. Like the scripture says, you have fallen from grace. 
have someone against you, you've left your first love, or you've fallen from grace, do your first works over again. It's one thing to trip and fall as a good man that is a good man that your steps are ordered of the Lord. It's another thing to fall because you are in rebellion and you are in stubbornness and you're going your own way. In that instance, you could fall all the way into hell. Are you listening? But listen to me, brothers and sisters. If you are being faithful and you are still learning his voice and you have yet to really know his voice and the Lord is being gentle with you, there's going to be times, amen, when you do trip or you do fall, but you're not going to utterly be cast down because the Lord is holding your hand, amen. And he upholds you, which means he's not going to let you fall into hell. Are you listening? I remember one time the Lord spoke to me and he said that to me. He said, I won't let you fall. I won't let you go. Amen. There's times in our lives where we trip, we stumble, brothers and sisters, but God knows our heart. He knows we don't want to stumble. He knows we don't want to fall. He knows we're looking, amen, to grow up and to develop and to be able to walk side by side with the Lord. But for those times, where we miss it. God is gracious. He's merciful. Amen. He is not going to let you fall all the way down. But again, if you're in rebellion and you are defying the will of God and you're in defiance to God, I'm going to go my own way. There's no guarantee that the Lord's going to uphold you with his hand. Are you listening? Aren't you glad for the times when the Lord did not let you utterly be cast down? Aren't you glad for those times when the Lord did not let go of you? Amen. When you could have fallen all the way into hell. Aren't you glad that the Lord upholds with his right hand? Aren't you glad that he keeps you from falling? He's able to keep us from falling. Hallelujah. You may trip. You may stumble. Amen. But he's not going to let you go. Hallelujah. If you're a good man and your steps are ordered of the Lord, and you delight in his way. He's not going to let you fall. Amen. So be encouraged. Yes, we're being trained. Yes, we're learning his voice. And if your heart's in the right place, if your heart is to obey God, amen, and along the way because of immaturity, you stumble, you trip, the Lord's not going to let you fall into hell. Amen. I'm not going to let you fall from grace to the point where you fall into hell. But if you're in defiance, if you're in rebellion, if you're against the Lord, if you're going your own way, if you've backslid and you've left the Lord, like Demas hath forsaken us and have loved this present world, amen. Just look at, look at Jonah. God did not let him fall into hell, did he? The list goes on. God didn't let Peter fall into hell. Even when he was out walking on the water and he began to sink because he took his eyes off Jesus. Jesus did not let Peter utterly fall, did he? No, it, he upheld him with his hand. Amen. Praise his name, people. There's times you feel like you're falling into hell. It's terrifying. Amen? You feel like you're falling. 
And the Lord speaks to your spirit, speaks to your heart and says, I won't let you fall. You can put your trust in that. Amen. If the Lord speaks to you and says, I won't let you go. Amen. That's where Paul, the apostle said, I'm persuaded nothing shall separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. When the Lord speaks to you and says, I won't let you go. Amen. That's somebody that doesn't want him to let them go. But if somebody wants to, the Lord to let loose of them, I'm going to tell you, you squirm enough, if you shake enough, if you, if you uh, wiggle enough, the Lord will let you go. If you really want to be out of his power, out of his hand, out of his will, if you really want to leave the providence of the Lord, if you want to get out of the will of God, he'll let you. He'll let you. So this message is not to those that are in defiance. Those are, this is not a message to those that are in rebellion. This is to a good man whose steps are ordered of the Lord, amen, who delights in the Lord's way and is led by the Holy Spirit and is learning God's voice. But let me just say this again as I'm closing. It may start out as a soft test. But the longer you go serving the Lord, the more you grow, let me tell you, you're going to be responsible for more and more as you develop, as you grow. The test for a child is not going to be the same, or even a babe for that matter. The test for a babe or a child is not going to be the same test for the sons of God. Amen. The more you mature in the Lord, the greater the test. Amen. To whom much is given, much is required. And you disobey the Lord as a son of God, and it's going to be much greater punishment than it would be for a babe. Remember that. And remember, God only punishes, he only chastens those he loves. Amen? He even scourges every son whom he receives. So remember this. The Lord loves you, but you're learning. You're learning to know his voice. And we need to stop ignoring his voice because it can cost us. It can cost us. Even our life. It can cost you your life. And last but not least, it can cost you your soul. If what you're doing is in defiance, in rebellion to God. Amen. God bless you.